Paramount Pictures presents the truish story of two brothers. How involved were you in the filmmaking process on this? Was it an advisory role or was it more than that during the making of it? I wasn't really involved at all. You know, I, let, I sold them the rights to my book and I got out of the way. You know, we spent a lot of the 80s getting in our own way. And this time I thought, these people wanted to make a film, you know, let them make the film. And of course, your movies, uh, your book, was, uh, I was born as Doppelganger. Doppelganger is a, well, I looked it up, a, a ghost um, haunting somebody. Does that come out in the movie? Um, the idea was that Bono was my evil twin. <laughs> and it came from a conversation where he actually said to me, I'm your doppelganger, and if you want your life back, you'll have to kill me. But Bono always said I should call the book Killing Bono, because it's about slaying your dragons. So that's where they've gone with in this, this film. You know, he, he did start to weigh a little heavily on me. The more he became successful, and the more we were unsuccessful, it became a little struggle, and that is the heart of the comedy of the movie. As music critics and budding rock stars, why would we want to see this movie? How would you sell this movie to, the, to me and to the general public? It's a, it's a movie about young people just trying to make it and it's very realistic in that, in that way. It shows the, how difficult it can be, the trials and tribulations. Uh, they made a lot of comedy out of it, but uh, I mean, there is a lot of comedy in it from the outside. It's not so funny when you're living it, but when you sit and watch it for two hours, it is quite amusing. It's a comedy of failure, and most people uh, know a lot more about failure than they do success. I could have been in orbit with the best band in the world. What do you want me to say? That you made the worst decision of my life! Are you having a nice time there, Robert? Yes, yes, are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice to see you again. And you. Just saw you last Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a surprising round, uh, amount of glitz and glamour around that. I was wonderfully surprised. Me and Christine Bleakley, like holding each other, embracing each other in front of the poster. I was very proud. You are a very adapted actor. You can sort of really make a fictional character your own. But how have you been able to transfer your skills into create uh, to portraying a live person still? Well, uh, I, I think the idea was, uh, how we started was, we didn't meet Neil or Ivan before doing this film. We didn't play them, we didn't kind of uh, impersonate them or depict them in any sense. We just kind of struck up our own dynamic, myself and Ben, in a small room in London, uh, uh, figured out how best to argue and how best to kind of be. And uh, we only actually met them close to the end of filming. So we kind of, we played... Ex extremely exaggerated versions of the two guys and they uh, hopefully will thank us for it or else we've just ruined their reputations to uh, everyone who doesn't know them. Because, because the, the script is based loosely based on fact, have you been able to do that and, and play it a bit more? Play the character up a bit more? Yeah, I mean, again, we, we basically uh, uh, through the, the energy of myself and Ben, very much like a, a with nail and eye rip off, we <laughs> We kind of just uh, went with it. I mean, to be honest with you, this film, for anyone who's interested, <laughs> is a series of arguments from start to finish, but uh, comedically choreographed. So, you know, um, that was what we really focused on. You know. As an actor, you're playing a role where, uh, from an era that you, you didn't grow up in. How do, how do you prepare for something like yeah, that? Yeah, I was very, very young. I mean, I was in nappies when, when uh, you two were at school, basically. Um, uh, but I mean, I was raised on on the Beatles and the Stones and the Who and the Eagles and Dire Straits and and you know <laughs> all the kind of joke bands in the film really. Um, and you know, my dad is a massive rock and roll fan, and um, and so I'd kind of you know grown up with it from the womb, I think. And and so to be strutting around, I thought I, as I was reading it, actually, I, I, there was many reasons I've given today the reasons I did the film, but one of them was certainly as I was reading it, I thought Dad would love to watch me do this. Could you see yourself going down a different road? Because I saw a clip of you just recently on stage in a live performance. You're obviously really getting into that. Is that sort of thing you, you want to get into? Oh, you mean, yeah, there was live a, music? Yeah, well, that was a, a slightly pissed performance from a, an after show party, uh, which was completely unrehearsed and thrown upon me at the last minute. But um, uh, yeah, I loved it. I mean, two of the two or three of the best weeks of my life recording the soundtrack, you know, because um, you do all the music for the film before you shoot the film. And uh, I thought the songs were terrific, and uh, and they kind of had a bit of a modern flavour to them, but also they felt very kind of 70s, 80s in their uh, in their genre as well. And uh, just to kind of Joe Echo wrote the songs, teaching me how to sing, teach teaching me how to sing, 
kind of stayed in rock and punk and new romantic and watching all these videos of all these great front men kind of channeling them but but not having to be the pressure was off because I didn't have to be that good at it um, yeah I loved it